We've all been there. Packing the bag can feel like a weird mystical art form, and you get better with time, experience, and mistakes. In this video, we're gonna go over our top tips that we've learned and built systems around to make sure we don't forget anything, we optimize our packing experience, and have a great time traveling. Things like forgetting something behind, from our wallet, passport, cash, anything you, important you might need on the trip, to improperly packing the bag, leading to it disappearing, impossible to find, or being damaged in the bag. This all leads to wasted time and possibly ruining your trip. In this video, we're gonna go over our top tips to make sure you don't leave anything behind, you can pack optimally, and have a great time on your next trip. Welcome to our channel, where my wife and I have adventures throughout the world, share our unique experiences with you, and also tips of how we have a work-life balance and are able to travel frequently and make sure you have a fantastic time on your next trip. Be sure to give this video a like and a comment. We're always looking for feedback. Let us know what we can be doing better, what we can be doing more of, or what you might want to hear from us. I also want to invite you to our Reddit community where we're constantly looking for others to travel with, to go on new adventures, sharing tips, our travel experiences, and just feel free to hang out with us there. And as always, we're looking forward to hearing from you. All right. The first tip I have for you is using a packing list. Everyone has different ways of packing their bags. Some people can take up to a week. As they go through the week, they remember different things to add to it and it's just kind of a padding to make sure that they don't leave anything behind. It's not a foolproof system for sure. I think the best way is to be efficient with it. The way we generally pack is usually the day before and we just have become very efficient with it when we sometimes just like a few hours in the night. The most important thing is to have a checklist. We built this checklist for a variety of different kinds of trips and we just go down that checklist and make sure that, oh, I forgot this thing, put it in the bag. And as we just go through all the things, we make sure they're all in our containers and present, we're good to go. And if there's anything else I needed to add to that list, I'll make sure of making a note of it probably in the week before. And when I do pack the bags, it'll be on the list. In the link below, I have basically our pack. List. It's the exact list we use and I've added to it over time. It's just a generic template we use and you can walk through it and you know customize it for yourself. Let me tell you the story of how we made our packing list and it's a lesson to be learned from. Don't let it happen to you. My wife and I arrived to the airport two hours early for an international flight. Thought, good to go. We're all set. And we forgot our debit card. In this particular trip, we needed cash and we usually use this debit card to get cash on site. We usually don't carry cash with us to the, the place that we're going to. So in this case, we really needed that debit card and it would have been very difficult to do this trip without it. And so we decided that two hours is close, we're gonna give it a try. And so my wife was going home. She took the taxi, she was gonna go home and retrieve it. And I was gonna go to the gate and try to stall and make time as much as possible if needed. And so seemed like it'd be okay, uh, two hours, but it turned out that it wasn't. There was traffic and things were getting delayed and they were ready to close the door and I really had to sweet talk those those flight attendants uh, to not lock us out. And I was like on the phone with my wife, she was on the subway to to get to our, our uh, where our flight was going to be and she's, <laughs> she's running. The flight attendants are like all lining up. Even other people around us were just like cheering her and she was just sprinting. Anyways, we made our flight and from this point on, it's just a something so small, a piece of plastic. And we're usually pretty good about packing, but in this particular case, we really almost hosed ourselves and we made that packing list on that flight. And so we made it, don't let it happen to you. For our next tip, we're gonna go over luggage considerations, hard shell versus soft shell, and why we choose soft shell bags. We've been using a soft shell since we've been traveling. There's different pros and cons of using a hard shell and a soft shell, and uh, I won't get into the details, but I do want to go into why I like the soft shell. For one, it's expandable. This has saved us in many situations where you know we've, we've had soft things, it kind of compresses in here, and for the most part, uh, it's been super helpful. And for the most part, it you know 
I never had an issue. So I know some people have had discussions of uh, uh, tears and damage to the luggage. I've never had this issue wherever we've been. Honestly, the thing that generally wears and tears is gonna be your wheels. And you know, depending on where you go, we go to all sorts of gnarly places. The wheels are the things going to wear out. So, being, but these are often replaceable too. So that's not a huge issue. It's just uh, it's happened to us, and, and sometimes they can break on your travel, which means you're going to be hauling it around for a little while. Some ways you can protect your bag, and because it is a soft shell, it is you know if you're concerned about dirt or scratches. There are certain things you can do. And also the zipper. The zipper is another failure point. And to protect yourself from a busted zipper, especially mid-trip, there is this little doodad. We generally will keep it in one of these external pockets at all times, and you never know when you'll you'll need it. I generally put it on before a flight, but you can wrap your bag with this thing and it ensures it stays shut, especially if you're overfilling it or if you're concerned about the zipper, it adds a little bit extra protection. Just one pro tip is make sure that these things, these can get caught on the conveyor belts that your bag will run through at the airport. So just make sure they're pretty close to the zipper area. They're not like protruding out and can catch on anything. Uh, and another thing I wanna show is this cover. This cover is gonna be, it almost fulfills the same duty as that, but also protects your bag from dirt, scratches, and you know, it gives you kind of that, uh, the uh, bonuses of a hard shell while still being a soft shell. Let me put this on for you. And here we are. This is a nice cover. It gives a nice protective coating to your bag and it has some style. What's cool is you can buy these on Amazon and really style your bag how you want it. There's a bunch of different options and particularly we like this one with Velcro. It just makes it a little bit easier to put on. And a lot of people like the hard shells because it does, it is very protective. It is very scratch resistant, uh, but it's not flexible. And so this is kind of giving some of the properties of a hard shell while still being a soft shell. Kind of best of both worlds. So it works out really well. The next tip I have for you is generally just how we tend to travel. And so you can have a good idea of how you want to travel and how your style compares to ours so you can customize some of these tips to your own travel. Number one, we tend to carry both a check-in baggage and a backpack. So that's times two because we have two people and the reason why is is generally because we need more stuff. We generally travel in a way where we have some technical gear uh, and we have and we generally travel for at least a month, three to four weeks at least and and so we need a plenty of space and with the technical gear being hiking gear, scuba gear, mountaineering gear, backpacking you know the, the works we try and make it all fit in there and sometimes we do multiple of those things on one trip and so we can get really clever of how we pack the bag uh, however it's important to know why we go with that and it's usually not like overnight to like New York or anything like that those are usually not what we're considering for like optimizing backpack experience we generally go on longer trips, so that's what I'm hoping to help with here. Speaking of which, because we generally go on longer trips, check-in baggage is usually free. If not, low cost, or we have uh, some card or rewards card that we try to get to make sure that our baggage will be free. The next tip is the sling bag. It's just comfortable in front of you. It uh, also works very well with a backpack. And the nice feature of this is it's always in front of you. It's accessible going through airport security. You can put things like your phone, your passports, your money, your wallet, and small other small things in here, including a pen. And they're always there. Another nice feature is it's secure. Being that it's in front of you, it's very hard to steal from. There are a bunch of scams out there to take things from the back of your bag while your attention somewhere else. You don't really have to worry about that with this. So having those precious items to you in this position is a nice spot to have while on travel. Okay, in this tip, we're gonna go over how to pack the luggage and some clothing considerations to make your trip a little bit easier. First of all, I wanted to go through insulation. So, you know, we do a little bit of mountaineering and I found that mountaineering gear just tends to be really good all-purpose travel gear, but you can also do it for hiking uh, and, and many other things. So one of the nice features is, is uh, it's very lightweight. You can compact it down into a very small ball, which is fantastic. And there's a whole bunch of different weights. Uh, so, you know, we have this one, which is kind of a lighter one, 
and we have a really heavy one and depending if you're going to somewhere you know it's important to know where you're going in terms of climate if it's going to be cold then you probably want to bring several of these. You're not always gonna to want to wear the heavy duty one. You, if you're moving around, you want a lighter one. This one's more for like sitting down and chilling uh, when it's cold out. And of course we have one that's synthetic uh, that is easier to kind of be in the rain. And for real rain, if it's gonna rain or be windy, you want a hard shell too. So between these, this one, this one, and this one, these are all insulation. They help keep you warm. This one helps keep you dry and keeps the wind off you. They all work together. And what's nice is they really pack down. You can put them anywhere and you have a complete set for a wire on travel. All right, now for what's inside the bag. Here we have electrical cords. Uh, more importantly, it's a see-through bag. It's, it's nice to see what's in these things because you'll kind of get jumbled up over time. But I generally will keep all the cords, electrical, a little uh, electronics in one bag. And I'll, I'll have several of these things in here just for a little bit of organization. It's, it's not a structure. You can pretty much cram this thing in any nook and cranny uh, in, the, in the bag, which is nice. When you're packing and trying to save space, this kind of thing is important. And this is really just for organization and finding things in your bag. Over time, you'll spend way too much time looking for things. And so you find these little tricks to organize. And here we have packing cubes. You know, some people uh, will prefer the compression cubes uh, or compression bags. And I can see reason to that, but I think they just take too much time and getting into these things just, I don't know, it's bothersome for me. And I'm way too lazy to waste too much time on them. So I use packing cubes, they're very accessible. You can get to them very easily. And I have packing cubes for different things. Here is my underwear packing cube. Here is my shirt, or this is my pants packing cube, and maybe some other accessories and other things I have for clothing. And then I have a shirt packing cube. All right, here we're gonna go ahead and get into how we pack our clothing. You'll see it's not really folded or rolled. And so I'm pretty neutral on the whole argument. And my take is try and get clothing that doesn't really uh, crease and you don't have to worry about folding it too much or uh, and then having a nice variety of clothes that are fairly lightweight material. Like this one's pretty awesome because it's, it's, it's just, you don't have to worry about it being wrinkled. And uh, you'll see that I have a mixture of cotton and other synthetic kind of material for different purposes. You'll have some things that are like uh, base layers, long sleeve, and you can have short sleeve. But you'll see that this is just so small and compact. I don't really care about really folding too much. I'll, I'll have some level of folding, but that's about it. Uh, and some other important notes is a clothes for dirty bag. I always usually bring an extra bag for, you know, uh, other things that you might collect or maybe you want to organize things a little bit differently on the go. I have here just kind of the pants lightly folded, uh, not, not a big deal. They tend to compress fairly well. And the most important thing is you want to be able to wiggle these things around, move them like this and and be able to just smash these things in and, and really just fill in the, co in the corners and the cracks with all your clothing. That's really the most efficient method. And I've even heard from some mountaineers that you can just stuff everything in there without these bags. And that works for some people, but I like to be a little bit organized and this helps me grab things out of my bag very fast. And one more thing I want to mention is you, you see I have lots of space. We generally will fill this space with other technical gear, depending if we're hiking, other things that we need for our trip. It could be a video camera. Uh, if we're going scuba, scuba diving, we have lots of technical gear for that. Uh, and, and so you can find out, figure out how to fill this other, the rest of the space. But you'll find that there's quite a bit. And I guess if you wanted to, you could try to fit it all into one suitcase. And also, we use these bags to put our technical gear like a sandwich. So we'll put these on the outside and then we'll put our clothing uh, on the outer walls and the technical gear inside. So these actually work very well to absorb any impacts uh, as it's going through the airports. Another tip I have for you is making sure your luggage is tagged. Not just the little tag outside, uh, but that is also helpful. Make sure you have your address on it, your name, and phone number so that if your luggage is lost it can make it back to you but also today we have some bluetooth uh bluetooth 
sensors that you can put in your bag and they'll connect to various phones that are compatible and make sure your luggage is reported on its last location and also when your phone is connected to it when your last known location is and generally when you turn on your phone after you arrive somewhere it'll connect to the sensor and make sure it's on the plane it arrives where you are this is somewhat of a peace of mind to let you know hey your luggage is not too far away and uh, these things have been super beneficial to uh, some people in ensuring to just see where your bag is because some you don't never know where it is lost is it still at the last airport is it did it make it to this airport it can help uh, demystify where your bag is at these are the little tags that you can get little uh, I'm not sure if you can see this very well this one is from Tile. Tile is kind of a generic brand that you can use of Android and iOS. Of course, there's the Apple tag if you use an iOS Apple device, uh, or you can also get the Samsung, which is compatible with Samsung devices. The Tile is kind of the most universal one. They all have their pros and cons. None of, our, none of them are perfect. Uh, but I imagine as we continue, the technology is going to get much better as we go. All right, let's talk about backpacks. Backpacks, I can get into a whole bunch of details on these, but uh, in concerns of travel, I just want to talk about some features that are kind of nice to have. This particular backpack is one of my go-tos for day backpacking, you know, easy trips that you can kind of go, but it's not great for travel backpacking. Uh, I do want to call out that it's nice to have this rain cover on some backpacks, especially on travel, if it starts raining on you. It's nice to have to, to be able to protect things inside of it. But uh, other than that, this one is a very enclosed bag. We can kind of see there's no outside pockets. There's a zipper here and uh, it's just one big space inside. This is not great for travel because it's not very accessible, especially on a plane. It's kind of a pain to have. So I just wanted to point that out and show you uh, some other bags uh, that I use as well. This backpack I do car uh, carry around with and it's nice, it's uh, about 50 liter, which is important, and this is usually good for multi-day backpacking if you're going to be uh, doing, gonna be away from civilization for a little while. And this is a good one if you don't need a whole bunch of stuff. It, it's fairly uh, good size for most things, and uh, it'll, it'll take you a long ways. The only bad part is this does not fit underneath a seat, so it's kind of inconvenient for being able to pull things in and out while on a plane. So I generally don't travel with it unless I need to uh, for those multi-day backpacking trips. And last but not least, the 88 liter. This thing is a many day expedition and I generally wouldn't uh, suggest anything this big because you will pack it full of things that you probably don't need. This is a technical bag for technical mountain climbing and multi-day expeditions. Uh, I wanted to just show and introduce you just because these do exist and if you're probably leaning this way you're probably going in the wrong direction unless you're doing an expedition. And here is our main travel bag. I, this is my go-to bag for a lot of things because it's a hiking bag. You'll notice that I'll almost well, all of my bags are Osprey. They're great hiking bags uh, and I'm not saying you have to use Osprey or use this particular bag, but I want to point out some features of why this makes a great travel bag. For one, uh, this will easily be uh, uh, taken onto the plane, put underneath the seat, and things are easy to get out of from this pocket, uh, from this pocket, and these are, of course, made for hiking too, so you can take these on pretty long trips. You can put your micro spikes here, your crampons or anything accessible you need, and a bunch of hiking gear in here while you're traveling. This can be you know, numerous things that you need access to on the plane. You have a main compartment and this water pouch can also act as a laptop compartment as well. Okay, let's talk about how to pack the backpack. You, since this is gonna be a carry-on, I want everything to be fairly accessible so I'm going to try and put things I don't need uh, towards the bottom or maybe don't need too often. Usually when I'm traveling, you know, you might be going through different climates. This is entirely optional, but maybe you're gonna be rained on, you don't know. You don't wanna be maybe getting into your luggage to find these things, so it's entirely up to you. But if you do, uh, you might just put these into your uh, bottom of your compartment to, you know, just be ready for uh, and available as you're traveling. And some other things you might be able to have on the plane. These things I want uh, for listening to music or listening to a mu movie on the international plane. Perfect. 
the game system, uh, my uh, Steam Deck, uh, perfect for, for going on. And these will kind of go towards the top and your electrical cords. And I usually have in this little pouch some, some rechargeable batteries that I can have for recharging the phone if I need to in an emergency. It's just available and it's gonna be in my backpack available and easy accessible. This thing and of course electrical cords I will have easily available and towards the top because fishing these things out can kind of be a pain sometimes. Uh, but these, these you, I sometimes use these on the plane, sometimes in the lounges or in the airport to recharge. So it's nice to have one of these available. And the cords will just go right on top somewhere. And another thing that is nice to have, but don't necessarily always need in the backpack, but I often put a first aid kit as well. Next, you'll have your sunglasses. You generally want these somewhere nearby, easy to, to get, especially as you might be going in and out of, on the sun, uh, in and out of the sun. And last but not least, there is this uh, water pouch. These things are great because often you can't travel with liquids, so you'll need to finish off your liquids. And it feels very wasteful to just throw away those uh, recy uh, plastic, uh, plastic water bottles. So this thing you can just drink out of and neatly stow away. And it takes up very little space and you can kind of put it anywhere in a bag. It's actually very easy to stow away and you can fill it up after you get through the security checkpoints. And the laptop into the laptop pouch. And there it is. This is usually how I will travel and pack my carry-on. Everything is fairly easily accessible. The next tip I have for you is making sure you pack light. And what I mean by this is really pack efficiently. For one, you don't need to bring everything you have. There's always scenarios where, what if I need that? Honestly, we often just buy small items that we need on the go. Even if you forget it, in the worst case, you can pick those things up. You just need to make sure you have the things that you cannot buy easily while on travel. So reducing your list down to those things is the most important. And also, we've been in situations where shoes have broken, we've ran out of sunscreen or the, the bottle broke and it leaked everywhere. Those things can be easily replaced. You can buy new shoes, it's not the end of the world, no worries. You don't need to buy, bring anything to be redundant, especially with shoes, because often, in most cases, you can get them. If you're going on some kind of expedition, maybe, uh, probably not though. Just buy some good shoes that are gonna have, withstand the quality you need for the expedition. There are very few exceptions where you cannot buy something on the go, so keep that in mind. Also make sure you pack multi-purpose. So what I mean by this is, you know, exercise clothes, they can be used for other purposes, they, you know, especially more casual uh, exercise clothes, you can tend to wear them for exercise and also if you needed to for normal clothes. So you always kind of look at things and say, can I use this thing for multiple purposes? Those are the kind of best things that you kind of uh, save space with as well. Also, make sure you pack your clothes in such a way they're uh, climate appropriate. What I mean by this is if you're going somewhere warm, you don't need a lot of thick clothes. In fact, you can probably get by with some lightweight shorts, thin shorts, thin shirts, it's not gonna be that cold, but you also bring some layers in case it is cold. This can just vastly reduce the amount of space you need in your bag. If it's cold, then of course you gotta take that hit. You have to have thicker clothes, but there are, by thick clothes, I mean efficiently thick clothes. We use a lot of mountaineering gear because we do mountaineering, we do hiking, we do these things and this is the gear you need to survive. But that, those clothes tend to be a little bit on the expensive side but they're also great uh, for packing as well because they like, you know, down jackets, they pack very well. Even a synthetic, uh, you know, insulation, they pack very well. You tend to bring layers and even a hard shell, they can pack very well. And also bringing shoes that can be multiple purposes, like running shoes. I can use those for walking shoes and I can even use them for trail running. If not, I'll probably get a shoe that can probably suit all those purposes. Uh, and also I tend to bring something for around loafing around the house even when I'm backpacking something that I need to take my my shoes off just let them breathe uh, some 
casual flip-flop kind of thing. Uh, they're also good for beaches. Like you generally don't want to wear shoes on beaches because you get sand in them. But the flip-flops work very well. Woo! Thank you for watching our whole video. And please be sure to smash that like button and let us know in the comments down below your own packing tips, your own stories to share, and if we can clarify anything in the video. Let us know if there's anything else you want us to make a video on. Take care, until next time.